friend of mine said to me many years ago, he said, Toots, you look at the world through rose-coloured glasses. He said, you think everybody's the same as your bloody self? He said, well, they're not. Yeah. But this is one of the best places I've ever lived in my life. I'm really relaxed here and, and I'm happy here. Yeah, I haven't stopped since I moved in the place. But it's good, it keeps me going. Yeah, can't believe I'm bloody 79 in a few months, a couple of months. You know where the bloody years go. Fancy celebrating 79. But I don't even feel like it. You know, I, met, I went over, I told you I was in England. I met a bloke while I was over there, he's a Scottish fella, big bloke, and he lived on the Channel Islands. I was at his pub for a fortnight, he, he was a manager of a pub on the island. Seven years we wrote to each other and rang each other up, and he came out of here. It lasted a fortnight. <laughs> <laughs> Holiday romance. <laughs> See, back in my day, in the young days, it was you were either sick in the mind, or you were a pedophile, or you know, some shocking things they used to call you. You know, it, it's not in the mind, it's in the hormones. Nothing to do with the mind. My mother threatened to send me to a psychiatrist. And I said, yeah? I said, it'll do you no good. She said, what do you mean? I said, well, he'll probably try and fuck me. She said, what? I said, sorry, Mum, for using that language. I said, but that's the way it is. I said, policemen, lawyers, solicitors. The world's full of homosexuals, Mum. She wouldn't believe it. Not about judges, lawyers, solicitors or anything like that. See, back in them days, it, just, it was just pedophiles. Or you're sick. Sick in the mind. I had to live a double life for so many years. Mum happened to look down at me brother and she said to me father, have a look at Harold's neck there. We're going boom, boom, boom. She could see it. She said, that doesn't look bloody right. Better get him down to the doctors. He said he's got a thing called incoditis and enlarged valve of the heart. His ankle started swelling up, fluid. Couldn't get his slippers on or anything. They rang an ambulance and away, they, away he went. We got in there just in time for them to wheel him down this passageway. And as he went past me, he said, it won't be long now. I've never forgotten that. And then we got a call about Half past nine, ten the next morning, he died. Fortnight before my 18th birthday. Yeah, I come home and found her. It wasn't very pleasant. Dad said, did you uh, see your mother's face? I said, no. Nah. Because he had to go and identify her. Yeah, where's your fucking father and all this? She'd come home and the table would go up, the dresser would go over. Oh, she was a tyrant. And she'd bring blokes home and I'd go, oh, for Christ's sake. And it was a big thing when we lost my twin brother at 16. So it was too much for her. But she took uh, carbolic acid. And that would have burnt the shit out of her, you know. And yet there wasn't a thing out of place. Not a thing out of place. So I'd go and I'd do all this nursing and making beds and looking after them, feeding them and all this sort of thing. And the nurse had been going with a, one of the orderlies there and he got jealous. He went to the matron and told her that there was about seven homosexuals working there. Well, that was back in the 50s. It was a no-no. So she rang the CIB up in Cheltenham and they come and question us all. We hear there's homosexual practice going on there. I said, what? I denied it thoroughly. We got the sack before we were even found guilty. All of us, seven of us. And I broke down and cried and he said, look, if you tell the truth, he said, um, he said, you won't do jail, you, 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 you're young and you've never been in trouble. He said, what have you been up to? I've been with two blokes and I said, who were they? I said, they were casual acquaintances. He said, what did you do? I said, well, one bloke screwed me and the other bloke sucked me off. I got two years jail. I was 20 at the time. Two years bloody jail, wasn't even caught or anything. Spent 18 months out, had a nervous breakdown three months after I got there. And then it was on. I come good and it was on for young and old. There was a smorgasbord in there, it was unbelievable. And I, I tell young gay guys now about them, they said, you're kidding. 
You got two years jail, you weren't even caught? I said, yep, two years jail. I met a bloke in there, I was with him 17 years. I ended up leaving him because he kept getting drunk all the time and coming home and trying to belt me up and all. But anyway, uh, he looked like Robert Mitchum to look at. He was, oh, he was a handsome man. And I haven't even got a photo of him. If you'd have told me that I'd have ended up wearing drag, especially a bloody 62, I'd have said, you're a bloody idiot. And I enjoyed it, but it just didn't seem right. Perhaps because I started too late in life, or, or so late in life, you know. The enjoyment of it was that I was, I was very uh, accepted. Yeah. And so I went along with the flow, homie. <laughs> Had a great time. And I'm still having a good time. I have to be the oldest drag queen in the Southern Hemisphere now. <laughs> Can't believe that. Picked up so many blokes. Oh, God. It hasn't stopped. <laughs> and I've always been self-conscious that I don't look that good. But now it's just automatic. Slap, dash, bang. Off you go, toots. <laughs> Wouldn't have a clue. Couldn't count them on my hand, your hand, or anybody else's, I don't think. I was very, very um, promiscuous. Ooh, I'm here to have a good time. Not a long time. Thousands. Been a naughty girl. <clears throat> Never had a damn good time, I can tell you. Never used a condom. Like having a shower with a raincoat on. Last time you ever see them. <laughs> Literally, ladies and gentlemen. They give it up.